Well, biochar was one of those uh, things that was always, um, I knew very, very little about it. I, just, I discovered uh, there was probably a lot more to it than I'd actually thought. We need to say, is it, is it just an environmental thing for atmospheric carbon, or is it a good farming practice as well? We were keen to look at biochar simply because we wanted to see what whether biochar could eventually offer some gains in long term and economically. All sites are very different and that was part of this project. We wanted to sort of get a try and get an understanding of how biochar would react under different farming systems and under different rainfall events. So a range of rainfalls and a totally different range of soils. We have two cropping sites. Uh, we have two pasture sites, one's a dairy pasture and the other's a beef property and the, the fifth site is in fact a vineyard up at Tumbarumba. So we've got a good range of industries. We're looking at, at biochar, uh, which has come from woody weeds, uh, particularly willow uh, timber that's been converted to biochar. And we know that that will add a lot of carbon to the soil, but the question we're asking is there any benefit um, from for plant production. Our farm here is uh, predominantly uh, cropping, broadacre cropping farm. We do have a small amount of livestock. We're a seed growing business, so we grow seed which is then value added through a production plant and uh, that's on sold throughout Australia. This year we've definitely got a wetter than average year so far, so we're, we're dealing with um, you know, very wet soils and that can be a challenge for us. We have a uh, firm belief in perennial pastures, whether that be native or introduced pastures. Up here in these slopes we've got a lot of uh, microlina on the southern side, we have red grass on the uh, north and the west side, and on this slope we're standing on here now we've got quite a uh, bit of stiper. So it's uh, just trying to manage them and look at different innovative things is certainly part of where we want to be. Yeah, well we've got um, 300 acres here on the, on the flats uh, where we run dairy. We're milking around 160 cows, um, that's numbers. We're hoping maybe to push up a little bit in the next few years, but development needs to happen before that happens. And in essence we're fortunate enough to have a biochar or a pyrolysis machine that we've been funded to develop and build. It's part of the CMA's program. That machine produces about a tonne of biochar a day and we felt it was really important um, to assess how biochar might work in a farming system. The soil pits we're doing as part of this project uh, are to classify the soils at each site to understand how they might react with biochar over a period of time and to see whether the chemical analysis of the soils at each of these sites uh, will be enhanced or disadvantaged through the application of biochar. The soil pits are down to a metre and that corresponds with the soil moisture monitoring equipment we've installed at each site. Just to understand whether biochar has an effect on the availability of water for plants and how it might store water, hold water, or release water and whether uh, there's any benefit there. We've engaged with Bill Slattery here who's undertaking the, uh, the soil a profile, if you if you like, um, at each site, and he's been doing a complete analysis using these soil pits, and uh, we'll have a complete soil characterisation uh, and look at how that might uh, reflect on the application of biochar. The soil pit actually I found quite interesting because I didn't realise the ryegrass roots would be that far down in the soil, seeing the, the different um, colours in the soil and why they're there. That was rather interesting. We've got our upper profile, which is nice and loamy, um, going to a lighter clay and this is a bit heavier this clay here. When conditions are absolutely ideal the roots will get down in here and be accessing a bit of water but this clay will really hang on to the water. Jeff's been taking a dry matter analysis so that's uh, measuring grass, oven drying it and then seeing how much production comes off that particular area. He's also been in the cropping, two cropping sites, been undertaking um, till accounts and yield, uh, yield estimates. And then through the uh, harvesting of those particular sites, we've been able to analyse whether there's any differential in the yield from each of the replicated plots. Does it actually tie up nitrogen? Um, it, it, in terms of the microbial activity, it might actually tie up nitrogen. 
and we've got in this trial here and in all our trials uh, no fertiliser and fertiliser. So Steve's been really important in the uploading of data, the collection of data, the provision of that data to us in a graph and so that we can fully analyse what's happening at each of the levels. We've got soil moisture monitoring equipment set in looking at uh, the depths of 10 centimetres, 30 centimetres, 50 centimetres and 90 centimetres. We're trying to understand the relationship between soil moisture infiltration and the application of biochar. There's been some really interesting uh, material uh, that's come out of the first year of, uh, of analysis and that, as I said, that's wrapped around these rates of biochar and the absorption and the, um, and the holding of moisture or the letting that moisture go into the soil profile. So we actually started off in August of 2012 with a fairly wet profile all the way through it. And that was evident when we were here. So the rainfall event we had in mid-December yeah. infiltrated the soil to 10 centimetre depth, yeah. increased the moisture, and then progressively over the next week or so, then decreased. So Steve's really interested in what's happening with the soil moisture and also the soil temperature and how that might reflect on the biochar applications. Interestingly enough, there's no great response to biochar and productivity. There doesn't appear to be at this point any direct correlation between the application or non-application of char. Well, shall we say biochar ain't biochar. There are a great many characteristics to biochar which will affect how, uh, how it performs. Even at the low rates of biochar, the uh, preservation of moisture in the soil has been quite uh, surprising. Uh, and clearly, if we can uh, preserve moisture, both, say, over summer and from uh, evaporation in the, in the autumn time, then we're going to produce uh, more crops. Uh, so we, I think with what we learned in the first year, the, the second year of this trial should be very interesting and I think we'll start to move down that path of actually seeing some uh, of, uh, productivity increases from, from biochar. I'm optimistic that biochar one day will become economic and um, we'll all use it in a, in a bigger fashion than what we are now, currently. I think there will be some upside in using biochar. I think it'll be interesting to see the results that come out of this trial as to what that actually is, whether it's you know, 1%, 2%, 5% .5 or 10%. Or We're just looking here before and where we've got the heavier rates of biochar, there is some definite differences there. It's almost a, a water holding effect and even though it's nice and moist and green at the moment, we haven't had a lot of rain this year and we come through one of the hottest summers on record. So I'm pretty happy the way it's looking at the moment and when we get the results of the soil pit back and start uh, aggregating all this information, uh, I'll be very interested to see where we go.